All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. I'm Kenny Fogel, your host. And you know, one of the things we cannot honor enough in this country is our veterans. And I know we've got veterans. We've talked to veterans from uh, the Middle Eastern Wars, and Vietnam War, Korea. We've been all over. And a few from World War II. Well, we, we're, we're still in World War II mode here right now. So we've got a gentleman here, Mr. Don Chamberlain, so served in World War II. And I, he's got a story to tell. Don, first of all. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, you have a story to tell. I know. I say, tell us, well, first of all, a little bit. Uh, wh wh what was the reason you went to World War II? Is it where you drafted, or what happened? No, uh, I was uh, with your parents' consent. You could go in as a minority uh, enlistment. At, at, so I went in at 17. Uh, I was doing. I wasn't doing well in high school. And so I needed, I knew I needed some kind of uh, better training for a better livelihood. So I went into the Navy for, uh, at 17. And by the time my enlistment was up, World War II was on. So they invited me to stay. <laughs> I like that invite. Right. So basically you went in before the war started. Correct. So. And I, so I was in a total of uh, four years and 10 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I served in numerous stations around the country, uh, primarily in Pensacola, Florida. And then I went aboard ship, the USS San Jacinto. Uh, when you say ship, exactly what is this? That's an aircraft carrier. Uh -huh. uh, it was a small carrier. Uh, they, they needed carriers so bad during the war that they took uh, nine cruiser hulls, which were designed to Travel at good speed in the in the ocean, and so they put decks on the on these uh, cruiser hulls, and uh, and so uh, this made a uh, a small uh, carrier, CVLs they called them then. Uh, the the flight deck was only 40 feet wide. I've forgotten how long the deck was, but any pilot that could land there was. One of the best. Well, the best in the world, <laughs> yes. Right. And uh, uh, one of our pilots was George H.W. Bush. Well, I was going to get around that. That's the story I keep hearing over well, in the Pacific. He, uh, uh, he uh, went to, he was the only pilot that I knew that didn't have a college education. But he uh, had gone to a private school and he was able to pass the math test that the pilots had to pass, and so they trained him as a pilot then. And so he was uh, uh, flew one of our, uh, we had uh, 24 fighters and nine torpedo planes, and he flew one of the torpedo planes. And one of them didn't come back, did he? Right. Uh, he uh, was shot down once, and uh, he managed, he uh, landed the plane uh, enough that he was able to survive. Uh, the, the two gunners that were with him did not survive, but he was able to get out of the plane, and a, a submarine come by and picked him up, and then he later uh, was brought back to, the, to our ship. Uh, well, I guess during those years you meet a lot of interesting people. One of the things about the military is you, you get to see people that you wouldn't normally see around here. I mean, you get Correct. a mixture of people from all over the world. Correct. Uh, I think George Bush was uh, almost too much of a gentleman to be. He had trouble being president uh, because he was such a great person. He had to be and mean the, to be a politician. And, and the, <laughs> Individual, yes, and so uh, he uh, he made one error. He said uh, when he when in the when was first elected, he said, "No new taxes. Read my lips," and that was a mistake he made because, in fact, I talked to him about this one day, and he realized what had happened when he ran the second time. People remembered what he said. Read my lips. If he just said anything else, like <laughs> I'm against more taxes or something, it would have worked out. But that, that read my lips killed yeah. him for his 
second term in office. Absolute, they'll use that against you every time. Now, when you own a ship like this, everybody gets to be family in a way, don't they? Because, I mean, you're pretty much stuck together. <laughs> well, uh, I was in the air group that was attached to the ship. Uh, we weren't part of the ship's crew, actually. We were uh, uh, Air Group 51, and uh, like I say, we had 24 fighters and, uh, and nine uh, torpedo planes, and we were uh, attached to the ship at that time. Like I say, we were other places such as Pensacola, uh, Florida, but uh, we were uh, attached to the ship, and uh, we were in the South Pacific for 14 months without dropping anchor. If we dropped anchor, we were sitting targets. So we were not out there for 14 months. And it's hard for me to uh, conceive uh, how much fuel we took. They come alongside every other day and, and fill our ships. 58 ships out there for 14 months. I, I just can't hardly uh, Well, I can't imagine see. being out at sea for 14 months well, <laughs> seeing nothing but ocean. That, that's true. Uh, I enjoyed my life, though. I loved uh, uh, the uh, Navy, and particularly in the Air Force, because I was above decks all the time. Uh, my, uh, my battle station was a, uh, an instrument very much like a coal chute, and the purpose was to uh, jetson any kind of ammunition we had if we were under attack and didn't have time to put it down in the magazine. Because mm -hmm. if it was on the deck and we got two or three shots, it, it blew up the whole ship, you know, all that ammunition up there. And so that was my job. And I would jetson that and inventory it, and, and then we'd know how much we had to replace when we had a chance. Uh, it was also, the way we buried people. And uh, that's uh, one experience that uh, I'll never forget. I guess, did I just tell you about the, oh, yes. the, the fellow that uh, walked into the propeller, you know? Mm. He, he walked into a propeller pre-dawn hop, it was dark, and the top half of his body was just hamburger all over the deck. Mm. And so the skipper said, we can't send half a body home to his family, so we'll bury him here. So they wrapped him and, and put a weight in there, and the chaplain came over and said a few words, and then it was said, Jetson, and so I jumped him into the sea. And we had a second man that we did uh, buried also, but I don't remember why. I don't remember if he was a, an orphan or something where he didn't have any family to send him to or what, but we, we buried the second man at sea also. And, uh, it seems like that you just simply don't forget. I mean, that's your, no, I mean, that's yeah. been, what, 50 years ago or yeah, so, yeah. it's still, still fresh in your mind. Correct, correct, yes. Um, uh, oh, I guess, uh, well, my, uh, I, I like the, I, I really like the Navy. Uh, I was having a rough time in high school, and so I, 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 that's why I went in the Navy, and I, I loved it, because uh, being above decks like that, too, was nice. Uh, people who didn't have an Air Force uh, rating would be below decks a lot of the time, but I was up on top all the time. In fact, I stayed up there most of the time. I normally just went down below in order to take a shower or to eat. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we would take our uh, uh, life jacket off and lay it on the deck and use that as a pillow and we'd lay right there and sleep. We weren't supposed to do that, but the skipper didn't complain because it worked well when we were called to uh, battle stations, uh, sometimes two or three in one night. Yeah. So uh, we were already there and uh, that worked out real good that way. Well, you know, in today's terminology, you got PTSD and everything else for people that's seen the things that you've seen. I mean, you've seen some horrific, horrific things being ripped away from home at 17, 18 years old. Whether you joined or whether you didn't, that's still a pretty big experience. I mean, uh, 
Is it something, and it's something that just lives with you the rest of your life. I mean, once in the Navy, once serving. Yes. I mean, you're there, that's you forever. Well, I, I love the Navy too. I just enjoy it so much. And uh, especially since I was in the, the Air Corps, you know, I was uh, above decks all the time. And, and I, I, I loved it. I saw every flight that took off and everyone that landed. Uh, uh, we had, uh, we were out there, like I say, 14 months. We didn't have any damage from, from enemy action, not a bit. In fact, our, our code name was Lucky Lady. <laughs> and uh, we had bad accidents, people killed, and, and uh, fires and things like that. But the uh, uh, not no, for, not, no, <laughs> no. But we did have two kamikazes that landed. Uh, one was about 34 feet off from our uh, port bow, and uh, uh, close to where I was standing. I was drenched with gas and water from the plane. He was that close to us when he hit the water. Uh, he, he, uh, and of course, when he hit the water, he just exploded like a big bomb, you know. Uh, one of the uh, uh, sailors standing close to me picked up the the pilot's thumb. That's all that was left of the pilot, you know. Of course, he probably was dead long before, because coming in, whenever whenever you were attacked like that at sea, uh, they, the PA system kept you advised of where they were, what direction they were coming from, how high off the water they were, and so as soon as he came into sight, we saw them and could follow them in. So he had come through all of that uh, firing from the other ships, you know, the, like I say, the battleships and cruisers all firing at him. So he probably was dead uh, before. Yeah, I was wondering how a kamikaze, kamikaze pilot would miss the ship because I guess, yeah, if he's already been yeah. shot, then he's... We had two of them, one, one off the fan tail too, about the same distance. Uh, didn't do us any real damage back there, but it had come that close to yeah. the ship that uh, we, we survived nicely. Well, you know, like I said, that's, that's quite an experience to go through. And, and you stay as a family as, as after you, just like you said, uh, I don't know how many of your crew is left now. I know George Bush passed away a year or so ago. So you all stayed pretty close after, after the war uh, was on? Yes. We, we've had uh, annual reunions. Uh, there were 110 in our air group, and there's only about 30 of us left, and uh, about half of those aren't able to go to reunions anymore, so we probably won't be having any, unless we maybe decide to have, go with the ship's company when they have their reunion. We did know some of those fellows, but not like we did our own, our own people. So after you got out of the Navy, so what do you do when you came back? Uh, well, I came back, I went, went back to school, uh -huh. and uh, I went to uh, the, uh, I hadn't, as I say, I hadn't finished high school, mm -hmm. and uh, they hadn't set up any programs for uh, veterans coming back yet, educational programs. But I went up to the junior college, and there was a colonel that was, had just got out of the service himself, and he said, we haven't got anything set for you. He said, when would you just want to start? I said, yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, so he said, I'll tell you what, he says, come in Monday, and we'll see what we can do. So I went in, and he entered me in the junior college as a special student. And here I am, uh, a guy that was flunking out of high school after in 11th grade. But anyway, I uh, got acquainted with a friend who worked in a mortuary, a very quiet place, and we studied and quizzed each other, and we were able, when we took our tests, to get real good grades on our tests. And so when they got all through, uh, they gave me an associate degree, uh, and I hadn't graduated from high school. And so uh, uh, that was really the best thing I ever did was get quit and, and go in the Navy. That was a, a really a change in my life. And it seemed like I had, I think the difference was that in school, you read about it. In the Navy or in the military, you do it. So it's a different learning process. 
for and that I re responded to that so much better. So, uh, I, well, would you recommend to today's students in high school to consider the military because they're getting out today? Yes, I would. Uh, I, I think, especially if they have any question about uh, their grades in school and whether they had any kind of skills of any kind. It, if they don't, that would be a great place to, to learn. The best thing that ever happened to me, I spent a few years in the military, and uh -huh. it's the best thing oh. I've recommended to everybody. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you've had all those years in the military, you lived in the hazardous World War II, and now you come up here most mornings and have breakfast here at Hardy's with this bunch up here. Which one's the toughest job, the Navy or dealing with these guys here at Hardy's? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great bunch. It, it, uh, my wife died nine years ago, and I'm alone. And coming up here is brightens my day. Mm. You know, there's uh, mostly real nice fellows that come up here, and we visit. I stay here for a couple hours sometimes, having breakfast and and, and you know just visiting with the people here. Well, we do appreciate you taking time for us this morning. I know you're in the middle of breakfast right now, so we stopped in here to meet with you. And if uh, somebody wants to come up and see Don sometime, say shake his hand and thank him for his time. Talk about. Now, I'm sure you got a whole lot more stories to tell than what we've told today. So we we had a limited time today, and it's and it's television. You can't tell everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, we do appreciate it. Again, we congratulate you and thank you seriously for your service and your time during World War II. It was a very rough time. People don't just see it on movies and, uh, as you say, read about it in books. Living it is a whole different story. It was a privilege to fight for this country. Don Chamberlain, uh, retired, was, uh, served with the United States Navy back in World War II, a good friend of uh, George H.W. Bush, and, who served with him. And, and uh, again, we do appreciate everything you've done, and uh, keep on keeping on. Uh, uh, Barbara Bush was an interesting person, too. She always come to our reunions, and she was very independent. They had secret service assigned to them the rest of their life but uh she was a party girl and she <laughs> she didn't want them to fix her drinks or anything she said uh, i'll fix my own you don't have to worry about that <laughs> well but, like uh, i said uh, the military is a, is a life changer and uh, we appreciate everything you've had a good life and uh, we appreciate everything you've done thank you don don chamberlain here the United States Navy, World War II, eating here at Hardy's most mornings for breakfast, serving right here, living right here in Bardstown, and we appreciate everything you've done. So uh, thank you very much. It's my privilege. All right. Thank you. We'll be back here in just a few minutes here on Channel 6 TV with more from Community Focus. I'm Kenny Fogel of Channel 6 TV. We'll be right back.